Uh, hi there, I'm Drew Gurkowski. I'm the Community and Digital Manager with the FreeBSD Foundation. Um, and I'm joined here today by uh, Kevin Sweeney. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kevin Sweeney. Um, I'm from Derby, Western Australia. That's located in the Kimberley region of Western Australia, right at the north of the country. So relatively isolated, but yeah, that's just me. Awesome. So uh, we've been talking a little bit about uh, how you you joined FreeBSD and you started using FreeBSD. Um, and you mentioned you started with FreeBSD 5.0. Uh, what initially drew you to the operating system? Um, I was working at time uh, at a school and we were running Netware 5 or 5.1 at the time. I can't quite remember at that exact stage. But, and, um, and we had Windows 2000 and then, because at the time a lot of things ran on version numbers and this, I saw in a story somewhere free BSD five, and I went, "What's that?" I said, and and I've always been interested in open source. So I tried Linuxes and and uh, oh, BSD, and then did learn a bit more about it. And oh yeah, this Unix. Oh, yeah, Unix is supposed to be the the ducks nuts, and, and I thought I oh, will try it out. And I just I had a spare machine in the office, so I just threw it on there, and um, and of course didn't have packages, everything had to be compiled from ports and and I found it a pretty good experience. Like it was it was stable for point over release, it was very stable. And everything seemed to work as advertised. So we had to you had to navigate the ports tree and compile, try, compile software that you needed and all that. And it worked. And it was a really and I felt more at home with that BSD and then with Linux. So I can't remember why it got put to the side and, and sort of walked away from, but it was a good experience. And that's what I do remember. It was a very good experience. It was very stable, very performant. It was an old machine and I was quite impressed, um, but I couldn't use it as a desktop at the time for some very reason and we'll, and I couldn't find a way to integrate it into our network network environment. So it was like, it was a too hard bar, I suppose. And then, but it was a good experience to say the least. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, nowadays, uh, how do you use FreeBSD in your daily life? Um, only at home, because uh, uh, when I go to work, we've got Windows machines and all that uh, on my personal desktop, laptop, and NAS, I run all uh, FreeBSD. Um, basically, I got it's default at the start. I've got I do have Windows available on another drive, so if I need Windows for any reason, I can reboot into it. But I run KDE five on my desktops. Firefox is my web browser. I use I use a lot of open source, so Thunderbird is my email, LibreOffice. Everything's in ports that I use. Uh, exception, I think Chromium. It's the only thing I have to compile from source. And the only reason I use Chromium is because uh, Robonuggy brought a, a video on how to watch DRM content in FreeBSD. And I thought, well, I was rebooting into Windows to watch Netflix or and the like. And I said, let's give that a go. Six hours of compiling, a little bit of playing around with the Linux compatibility. Didn't work straight up, but it works. And now I can just if I want to watch Netflix or anything like that, I just start at Chromium and done. I don't have to go into Windows, it's even better. I use it in, in my NAS. I actually uh, installed BSD from scratch, set up Samba. And the only reason I did that because uh, uh, True NAS was still on 12 and I wanted to use 13. Yeah. And um, But now they're moving away from free BSD as so, well. I've got FreeBSD. I don't have to worry about that. I've got FreeBSD on there now. Um, so yeah, I do use it on a regular basis, and it's very stable. I've got Octo package to to do my packages now. I can do it from the command line, but I'm trying to use a few different tools. And yeah, I find it pretty good. Um, is there anything that currently you're excited to see? come to FreeBSD, um, kind of talking either further developed uh, or implemented? Um, it's good to see the foundations um, investing in Wi-Fi, because I think that is a big weak spot. 
um, of FreeBSD, um, not only in hardware support, like I had in the laptop, it had a Realtek um, chip installed, which I ended up swapping out for Intel one, which was supported. But not any, I'm, I've got the hardware knowledge, I can do that, but a lot of people don't. You'll have to get the external USB keys and stuff like that. So, and also on the Raspberry Pi and all that, it's, the Wi Fi is unsupported. There's, there's a lot of stuff unsupported on that. Um, so, it's good to see the foundations recognize that and has made moves to, to try and rectify the situation. But in the desktop space and then also in the maker space with Raspberry Pi and that, that's one thing that has to be addressed and the fact that um, I'm using network manager from ghost BSD which is in ports which makes setting up and connecting um, to Wi-Fi a lot better because command line really is a domain for only people who are willing to get right into it and when you're <laughs> and even when I tried and with the tutorials and that it was not working I was only able to get working when I found out about Network Manager and it made things a lot easier. And I think the WPA supplicant as well made things a lot easier. But I think Wi-Fi and probably more of the ARM support would be another thing that would greatly... Because um, I'm always looking for devices. I want to have my own router. And I want a low power thing, and I managed to find a lot of ARM power devices, but a lot of they're not fully supported by BSD, which is difficult because I yeah. don't want to run Linux. I'm not comfortable with Linux. Linux is great, but it's not for me. Maybe OpenBSD. I like the BSDs. Everything seems to work out of the box. It tends to work very uh, as advertised. Awesome. So. One thing it, it sounded like when I heard your story was, it sounded like you kind of really dove headfirst um, when you switched over to FreeBSD. Um, and uh, I was wondering if like through that experience, is there any advice you can give new users who might be trying out FreeBSD for the first time or uh, kind of following your lead and just jumping in, switching everything over at the same time? Um, don't be afraid. <laughs> if you've got a... a um, if you want to use it on a daily basis, I do actually try it out in a virtual machine first. That gets you a bit more, um, a bit more familiar with hardware. I think because hardware is always going to be a, a, a thing that you're going to have to play with. Um, but bare metal is always good to play with because you. But don't be afraid. Um, the forums are good resource so you've got videos like Rover Nucky and um, and the like but the forums is a good resource to go through they're generally quite um, more friendly and open um, I remember the Linux forums back in the day they were hostile openly hostile to new users which had no experience and some of the answers you used to get on a problem was either not only downright useless and unhelpful but I say they'll put they'll more putting down but you, you get that with any community but free bsc the forums tend to be a bit more friendly and and if you you admit that you're starting from scratch you you don't know much that you they tend to give you more of a helping hand than anything else which is a lot more a lot better than some other projects do uh, that's from personal experience <laughs> but don't be afraid um if you that no, if you don't have a lot of experience, you got you got Nomad DS BSD, you have Ghost BSD, which are all based on FreeBSD as a core. They have all the graphical environments already set up for you, and you just you're straight into it. And then when you want to learn more, you can definitely download FreeBSD the, the base installation, and then you can go from ports packages, go for your life. Um, I've initially went back in BSD by installing BSD into a virtual machine, setting up a web server uh, like WordPress, Joomla, and playing around with that way. When things weren't working, kept working on it. The layout is 
lot cleaner than a lot of these distributions once you know where things usually live. Unix is scary for a lot of people who have been in Windows all their life. I, I was in, I started with DOS, Windows 3, 1, 95, so it, the, the Unix layout was very unfamiliar. But FreeBSD tends to be a bit more, the BSD tends to be a bit more saner, as I like to say, yeah. in that layout. You've got, you got, your, you got your base. Your basic tools are in base. Anything you add on it, it's separate. Some people see that as a, as a disadvantage. I see it as an advantage because when you upgrade your base, your core, which is your operating system, your stuff tends to be left alone in your your, your, your add-ons, which is like Apache or your MySQL or Postgres or your KDE desktop, whatever. That's an add-on on top of the operating system that is left alone. Um, I did have have some upgrade failures, but most of the time it works out of the box. But don't be afraid; helps out there. Um, the forum is a good, like I said, the forum is a good place. Some of the projects don't support BSD, so finding information on getting it running on BSD can be a bit scarce. I'd like I spent the afternoon trying to get Netbox working. <laughs> in in a in a jail, so not on a bare metal in a jail, so that has presented a few challenges but i know i'll get a, get a work invention i've got it working before and i will again so yeah. dive dive straight in figure it out and uh and, and definitely yeah i i the community is always welcoming and us it, i mean it's good to yeah. see that for everyone um, but and thank and, you much. and you got oh. like the, sorry you, you got the likes of you so if you want to to um get a feel of what it's like to use it. You've got the YouTube channels like Robert Nuggy and there's, I think, Gary H, and there's a few others. Go on there, watch them. Like, I think Robert Nuggy's done a few install videos. Like, I watched it to get um, Netflix working on my BSD desktop. Um, and it, most of the time, not always, most of the time, everything works as advertised. So, it works good. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I appreciate the uh, talk to you and uh, getting you to share your story. My pleasure. Thank you very much.